Hi guys, what are we gonna do today? You know what we're gonna do today? I got these gorgeous DIY pigments and there was 12 new colors. I'm using 10 of these colors. I'm gonna show you how to make your own watercolor paints. We have a chart here of different colors. You can make texture chalk paste with these and I even did inks. So let's just get started. So the first thing I'm gonna do is we're going to make watercolor paints with pigments. I am using this glass board and then I will be using this glass muller. And I'll be explaining this to you as we go along. With other pigments, if they are heavier and thicker, you will need a muller to really grind them down. So these DIY pigments, I realize they are so fine. I didn't necessarily need to use the muller. A spatula worked just as well. So I'm gonna first demonstrate with this to show you how we did this. To make the watercolor paints, what I'm using is one part pigment and I am going to use a quarter teaspoon, one part gum arabic, and we will have all these products listed on our favorite things. A few drops of vegetable glycerin, and then a little bit of water. They sell gum arabic in powder form and then that's a whole nother process. So I am just using the liquid gum arabic. I found this 75 mill milliliter bottle, it's like 2.5 ounces, did all 55 colors of paint that I did. So I'm gonna take my powders. You may wanna wear a mask for this. Don't do it in a windy area or where you have wind blowing, it will go everywhere. So we have a quarter tablespoon, and what I'm gonna do is start by putting that in the center and making like a little hole so it looks like a volcano. And I'm using a quarter teaspoon of the gum arabic. And I'm just pouring that into the center. I'm going to add just a few drops. And you're gonna tell, depending on your humidity, where you're at, how well it's going together. But to start, I'm gonna start with like three drops of the vegetable glycerin. And then I'm gonna start with just like two drops of water. We can add more as we go. So I'm using my glass muller. Now you can see there are no grounds in this. This is how finely ground they are. Different pigments, they're very coarse or a lot coarser that you really need to do this to grind this up. Adding another drop of water here. And what happens is it dries quickly that you can't get it scraped off, but the second you put water in it, it does. I am just using my spatula and filling my little half pan with paint. I am gonna let this pan just settle and dry, and it may go down some, but I can always refill it. All of this I can keep working and then eventually move it into here. But I am just gonna set this aside and let this dry. Okay, so I'm gonna show you the other way using just the spatula. And I'm gonna mix two colors because if you decide to use that chart and you wanna mix your colors, you're gonna see how I did this. So the first way I did it, I used the glass muller and it really spreads it out and you have kind of a mess and it wants to dry since it's so spread out and so fine that you have to keep adding water to be able to collect it. This way, because these pigments are so fine, I can just use the metal spatula. The amount that you're gonna use and the parts you're gonna use are the same still. One part pigment to one part gum arabic, a few drops glycerin, and a few drops water. But since I'm using a quarter teaspoon of the glycerin, what I am gonna do is one eighth teaspoon of Van Gogh which is a gold, and then also one eighth teaspoon of the one we just used, pool party. You do want to wash your measuring spoons or your pieces every time. And also make note, if you're using it for this project, you are not gonna wanna use these for kitchen use. One quarter teaspoon of the gum arabic. And this is a binder, it's binding your pigments together. And I just put a couple drops of the glycerin in and a couple drops of water in it. And you're gonna be able to tell how much you're gonna need. Since these are so fine, see how they just melt together so easily. They don't need to be ground. And it's far more confined. You do want to keep stirring and stirring until you can see, especially with the different colors, making sure 
that they are very well mixed. Cause you can see when I push this down, you can see little stripes of yellow in there. Right there, you can see underneath on the plate. And then when these dry, you can wipe off the edges if you need to, but you can see how much easier this was. And we're gonna set this aside and let it dry too. So I was looking at my color chart thinking, okay, we're gonna make another paste. And the pastes I've already made were just the solid colors. And you can see I put all the solid colors along this axis, like date night. Here's date night and here is date night. So I thought I would do a mixed color for this chalk paste. This color right here, I'm using Van Gogh with Valacious. And we are going to make a chalk paste with this. I'm really almost just cheating here because I am buying modeling paste and it's an acrylic medium and I'm using my half and half of my two pigments. If you end up wanting it a lot darker, you can just continue adding more. So I'm guessing this is between a quarter and a third cup. And I'm gonna start with a quarter teaspoon of each color. So for about the quarter to a third cup, I would be using one half teaspoon total. So since I'm splitting the colors, I'm doing a quarter teaspoon of the Van Gogh. -Go. And once again, wipe off your measuring spoon. And I find that I, I shut these up immediately. So in case the wind blows or something happens somewhere, it doesn't go flying. And then I'm gonna do a quarter teaspoon of Val Valacious. I think that's how it's pronounced. But this is the fun part. You're going to be able to play with different colors and come up with what you like. And if you do the watercolors, you can make your own chart and you'll have a feel for what the colors are mixed. Now this is a really easy process. All we are going to do is mix this up. And this is kind of a tannish gold color when it's done. And this looks like the lighter color of it. Now if I want it darker, I would just add more. We use Valacious and Van Gogh right here. Now when we go up and we look, this is the lighter color of it. And that's about what that looks like. So if I really wanted this color, I'm gonna have to add another batch, another quarter teaspoon of each. And see it's getting richer. And it really depends on how much paste you're putting in also. Now this, if you're playing with it a long time, it's gonna to wanna to start to dry. So you can add a couple, just a couple drops of water to smooth it back out. You definitely don't want watery paste. Make sure there's no streaks of another color. And I'm just putting it in these clear containers so they don't dry out. If you have baby food jars, any little jars actually, as long as you just clean them out, you can put them in there. I just liked using the clear just so I could see. I could write the name, but I like being able to see the color I'm using. And I'm gonna seal this up and mark what it is. So now we are going to mix inks. So we're gonna make inks for little stamp pads. And so once again, I looked at my chart. Oh, I want a dark gray. Since I've already made this chart, I know I need date night and pool party. I've been using pool party a lot. So we've got both of these here. And there are so many ways that you can make inks just with alcohol and glycerin, different ways to bind them. But instead of reinventing the wheel, what I thought I was gonna do, and this does have white in it, I'm using my white mixing ink from IOD. This you need to use alcohol with, not water. If you use water with it, it'll get hard and gum up like a cake. Oh. I'm gonna use one teaspoon of my white mixing ink. And you're gonna have to be darker on your pigments because this is already white. Okay, since this is white, I'm gonna start with a certain percentage of my pigments and then I'm gonna add more if I want it darker. So I'm gonna start using eight teaspoon of date night and an eighth teaspoon of pool party. We're gonna find out real quick if I need to double this. I'm gonna start with this and then I'm gonna add some alcohol. Your glass, you can see the colors underneath, so you wanna make sure you mix those up really well. I'm just gonna put just a few drops. Oh, I'm just gonna pour it into this. Depending on what product you're making, you can see some of them 
seem to dry a little quicker on the glass, so you have to work a little harder at getting them pushed together. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this small ink pad and kind of get it started here. So if I can get it to soak in. Let that soak in. And then I'm gonna grab another little container. And this is the one time I like using a container like this because when I want to re-ink it, I can literally just take my little stamp pad and just set it in there. And if I wanted to get every bit of goodness off of here, I could just put more alcohol on here. This is soaking in well enough. Take a little bit of the excess off. And I will just cover this so that when I need extra, I've got it right here. So this is the ink that we just stamped, the dark gray, and I'm gonna very carefully tap it. You may wanna use a brayer. This ink is a little juicier. I'm just gonna stamp this down. Let's see how well it turns out. Ooh, that looks like a gorgeous gray. Now I'm just gonna let this dry or use a heat gun just to dry it before we do the watercolor on. So I'm gonna use one of the watercolors we just made. The two that we did was, we did pool party, and then we did this one right here, which I called B9 because it's Van Gogh with Pool Party. So let me start with Pool Party. And let's see, oh my gosh, that is pretty, isn't it? I just wanted to show you, the colors really do come out very, very, nicely. I also did want to mention that I did do a white watercolor. I used my white decrepit dust and I used that as my pigment and used the exact same recipe as I did for the watercolors and it comes out beautiful. So the one last thing I wanted to show you was our paste that we just made. Let's just do a little section here and let's see how well this works. I'm going to take a little of this paste and use my stencil. Wow, I'm gonna have to let that dry, but I really like that. That came out very, very nice. For a recap on what we used for the watercolors, we did one part pigment, and if you're using two pigments, cut that in half, so you have one part pigment, one part gum Arabic, and I used the liquid form. Then we used a couple drops of the glycerin, the vegetable glycerin oil, and then a couple drops of water. And if it starts drying out, you can add a few more drops of water so you can mix it really, really well. And then you need to let that set up and dry. For the texture paste, we actually just use modeling paste. And we just mix that with our pigments. And you're gonna keep making, mixing your pigments in until you get the darkness that you want because this is white. And then with the ink, instead of having to create my binder, and there are so many recipes out there you can do. And I carry IOD, so I had the white mixing ink. So I just use a quarter teaspoon of pigment to one teaspoon of this. And then I added a few drops of the rubbing alcohol. Let's say you wanted to do oil paint. All you need is linseed oil with your pigments. You know, and there are so many recipes out there. People do things just a little different. If you wanted to do an alcoholing, you could use your alcohol with your pigments, shake them up very well. There's also a clear gel acrylic medium if you wanted to make your own acrylic paints. So there are so many things you can use. We even had gotten the paraffin wax, but you could even use a beeswax. Mix with your pigments, you pour it on your mold, and it makes crayons. So I hope you guys thought this was easy and kind of a fun project. And showing how you can just take a pigment and make so many different items and even so many more that we didn't even cover. But what we'll have at the bottom of the video, we'll have a link that if you end up using the DIY pigments, these already have the pigment names on the top and side and you can download this and use this for yourself. You can see I enlarged it here. Also, I will also have a link to my favorite things for the products that we did use to make these items. There are so many companies that do sell different pigments. I really love that these are so finely pressed. They were very, very easy to use. So I will also have a link to the DIY retailer page so you can find a retailer near you. 
But I hope you guys give this a shot and you know, just have fun.